well, very uh, exciting week if you're a volatility addict, that, that's for sure. Let's look at some of the headlines that move markets this week, and then we'll dive into the chart room. So normally every few years, the, uh, the government kind of looks at the uh, inflation data and makes some revisions to the basket of goods they track, the different weightings. They try to get closer to the actual type of consumption that, that people do from month to month. So pretty normal process. And so Friday morning, they released those results and the marketplace largely knew this was coming. And there's some speculation ahead of next week's CPI um, that a uh, number of investors were looking to sort of game the data or front run the data and, and it caused some, some market vol this week. But of course, the biggest part of the week, uh, bar none, was what we saw with uh, uh, the Jay Powell's supposed uh, walk back. So let's have a look at. Uh, so on the economic calendar for next week, we can see two real important um, numbers coming out. On Tuesday, there are a CPI number. Happy Valentine's Day for the lovers out there. Um, you know, with the revisions, and you can see the, the revisions that came in here to the December numbers, but the last few months were revised up again with this new basket. So some of the economists uh, opined that because of those upward revisions, we might see slightly lower than expected uh, than the survey numbers. And yet others said, no, no, this means we're going to see a, a, a surprise to the upside. Well, We'll see at 8.30 on Tuesday how that all plays out. Uh, we also get a retail sales report. Now, retail sales, if you remember for November and December, were terrible. Big down months, both months, uh, really put the consumer in a bad light. So it looks like all those gift cards for Christmas were brought out to the malls in January, and we got a, a pretty big snapback in terms of uh, the decline from December, but if we, if we look at the average of the last three months, retail sales is still a negative story in the U.S. So while there's a snapback and consumer confidence did improve in January, uh, as we as we've learned, um, you know, I, I don't think this is the beginning <laughs> or the early phases of a resurgence uh, of the U.S. consumer. Uh, given inflation stress uh, and job stress, I think, down the road at some point. So Powell was scheduled, remember last week, the week before last week was the Fed meeting, and it looked like the market didn't interpret the Fed's message of hire for longer. So on Tuesday, they set up an interview with uh, one of the hosts of, on Bloomberg, very good, uh, you know, interviewer, uh, David Weston, I think it was. And um, they went through the the dialogue and and it's the after the uh, interview, you know, it, the market ran up as as the perception was that he didn't walk back. He wasn't as hawkish as some feared. Then we had this massive move down to the downside and it looked like, okay, market's starting to get right now. And then of course it, it closed out and we really went out pretty much near the highs of the day on, on Tuesday. And then the next 48 hours, a gaggle of Fed speakers came out and they all walked it back significantly. No higher for longer, no higher for longer, no higher for longer. And the bond curve is starting to price that out. Bonds had a pretty bad week this week across the curve. And so that message is starting, starting to creep into equities, perhaps, with the markets failing to continue to go higher. And in fact, you know, week over week, when you look at it, slight down week for, for equities here. Uh, we're looking at the e-mini futures. And the reason we're looking at these is because during this period, there was a, a big, well, say not rumor, because it's not a rumor, it's a fact that there was a big options trade. And it was a buyer of the 450 put for next week's expiry 
and the futures, um, E-mini futures options. And the size was, was pretty monstrous relative to what we kind of normally see trade. And a huge premium was paid by this investor. And when, you know, when a market maker sells that, it causes, forces them to hedge and, and that kinds all, uh, goes back to all kinds of volatility. And possibly what explained this volatility here in that huge position worth billions uh, that was put on as, as Powell was talking there uh, around 1, 115 in, in that time frame. So, you know, that uh, protection perhaps for someone's portfolio cover, covering them through next week's data in the CPI and retail sales. When we saw overnight weakness in the future and it got down to the, again, the strike was 40, 50, got down to that area. Uh, looks like there was some buying came in to protect those option uh, positions. So, you know, a lot of uh, low uh, gets around these big positions and somehow that, you know, matters for, for markets uh, quite a bit. So let's have a look at our bull and bear pick of the week. So our bull pick of the week is, is Kansas City and our bear pick of the week is the Philadelphia Eagles. Not that I'm a particular fan of Kansas City as, as my Buffalo Bills didn't get through to the Super Bowl this year. Thought thought this was the year. Josh Allen disappointed a few weeks ago. I think the Super Bowl was played in Cincinnati or with Cincinnati last week. And, and KC should be able to uh, uh, take control of the game, I would think. Sorry to all the Philly fans out there. But, you know, uh, in terms of of markets, though, uh, there's there's a uh, there, there's only one sector in the last few months that has developed some value, and and so the bull pick of the week is is centered around that. The natural gas sector in the last few months has gotten decimated, and all will know that the bull story of the slightly warmer than winter and less snow in, in Europe and like this has really been a huge positive for the European economy. It was going to be a very dark winter with Nord Stream 2 and gas supplies to Europe being uh, shut in and, and everything else. Um, so we you know we've seen a massive decline in, in natural gas and, and so this Southwest Energy is a natural gas play that um, you know at, at five dollars and, and lower four dollars is is really pretty attractive. Uh, this is a name a lot of the uh, he big hedge funds are into and we could see as we've recovered off the uh, lows the last uh, couple of years um, from from the COVID lows. But this is a really interesting uh, gas play. Uh, I've been writing puts on this name for the last couple of months and uh, looking to do more of that this week. Below $5 is an excellent opportunity. Do we see that or not? Hard to say, uh, but risk return here is, is pretty decent on the name, you know, back to seven plus over the next six months. So natural gas is the bull pick of the week and the bear pick of the week is, is, is the broader energy sector. I, I think there's a lot of excitement that came out this week around Russia saying, oh, we're going to cut production. And, um, you know, I, I think the sector is really expensive. Um, and I don't think the world can stand oil prices at $120. And, and to me, that's where some of these uh, companies are, are priced right now. I, I know the oil bulls are going to beat on me a little bit. But guys, I like the gas side here. It's a good relative trade. Have a great week, everyone. Go KC.